Equipment. It can be confusing trying to understand different sizes and keys of tubas. Understanding when they are used, what options exist, and the tremendous variation in price creates an overwhelming task for many music educators as they look to purchase instruments for their school programs. In this video, I'll explain these items and help guide you towards the right options. The first thing to remember is that key and size are two different things. The key is determined by the length of the tuba, which causes it to resonate a specific overtone series. The size of the tuba is dependent on bore size, bell diameter, and general appearance. Tubas of the same key can vary a great deal in size and can visually be quite different. Whether that instrument is labeled as a three-quarter, four-quarter, five-quarter, or six-quarter is dependent on its relative size to other tubas of the same key. Separating those two areas is essential to understanding about our equipment options. Let's start by discussing keys. Tubas are classified into two broad categories by key, bass tubas and contrabass tubas. We also can refer to a euphonium as a tenor tuba, but for now put that aside. The bass tubas consist of F and E flat tubas, where the contrabass tubas are pitched in C and B flat. When writing out C and B flat, we use double letters, CC and BB flat, to indicate that these contrabass tubas are the lowest pitched in the tuba family. The tubas that nearly all schools in the United States use are B flat contrabass tubas, and we use those instruments in my Tuba Techniques course. These instruments are best suited for use in bands and orchestras and produce deep resonant sounds that provide great foundations for large ensembles. The contrabass C tubas duplicate these attributes and are simply the choice that most professional tubists use when performing in large ensembles. Most college tuba majors will want to play C tuba and as students advance through the secondary school programs, serious students might consider purchasing a C tuba as they move away from school-owned instruments. Bass tubas are pitched in E flat and F. These instruments are best used in soloistic and chamber music settings. Since the overtone series sits higher, the upper register is more accessible and the sound is a little more compact. These instruments are used to supplement the primary contrabass tuba and it is expected that professionals will play both a contrabass tuba and a bass tuba, depending on the situation. The choice of key is entirely up to the performer and strong opinions exist about the benefits and liabilities of different keys. As we look at these four keys of tubas, it is important to know that tuba music is always written in concert pitch. The choice of tuba's key is entirely up to the player and the player must use a set of fingerings that produces the pitch requested by the composer. This concept will confuse many musicians that play instruments that commonly transpose, including trumpet, horn, clarinet, and saxophone. Do not confuse this fact. Tuba music should be written in concert pitch, despite the use of tubas in four different keys. Now let's talk about the system for labeling a tuba's size. The sizes 3 quarter, 4 quarter, 5 quarter, and 6 quarter indicate a tuba's relative size to other tubas of the same category. Here are three tubas that represent three of those sizes. I'm using my E-flat tuba to simulate a four-quarter tuba since many have mistaken it for a four-quarter contrabass tuba. The sizes are assigned by manufacturers and have little actual metrics to determine the labeling. For that reason, I like to simply refer to a three-quarter tuba as a little tuba, four-quarter tuba as a normal size tuba, a five-quarter tuba as a big tuba, and a six-quarter tuba as a really big tuba. Three-quarter size tubas are best used for beginners as the size usually allows for proper posture and playing position. They also tend to produce sound easily and compensates for less developed breathing habits. The sound is usually less resonant and is more compact. 
four-quarter tubas are the most well-rounded tubas and will be used beginning in middle school and continuing through the professional ranks. Five and six-quarter tubas are generally left to the professional players that seek sounds capable of supporting large ensembles. These instruments require great command of breath and technique. This can be frustrating for the student or amateur, and my advice is to leave the biggest instruments to the pros. I would also like to discuss a few of the options that you will see on different tubas. The most important one is the number of valves. The minimum number of valves you will typically see is three, and that is the number needed to create a completely chromatic instrument from low E on a B-flat tuba. Three valve tubas are the least expensive, and since there is less tubing, will be lighter than tubas of comparable size. The biggest liability of these instruments is the lack of alternate fingerings to deal with severe intonation problems. The one and three and one, two and three combinations will be quite sharp on these horns, and this is the main reason that most people will investigate four valve tubas. Four valve tubas immediately address the intonation problems and also offer the benefit of extending the low register. They still have a few intonation problems, most notably the combination of two and four being sharp and some severe problems in the extreme low register. The extreme low register is also not fully chromatic to the fundamental without major adjustments to tuning slides that is simply impractical. Four valve tubas are more expensive than three, but still represent affordable options for most budgets. In B flat tubas, three and four valve tubas tend to be the only option. But when looking at C, E flat, and F tubas, you will usually see five or even six valve options. The fifth and sixth valve add more alternate fingerings to aid with intonation and enable a fully chromatic instrument to the fundamental. The vast majority of professional players choose five valve tubas for all of their tubas, with a few exceptions in professionals that choose six valve F tubas. As you can see, the main concern with limited valves is intonation. Another innovative way that manufacturers deal with intonation problems is the use of the compensating system. It is complex, and I encourage you to look for other resources to describe how the system works. In general, the compensating system compensates for the sharpness that occurs when using multiple valves. Some tubas incorporate this system, but it's far more common to see on euphoniums. Compensating euphoniums are the industry standard and should be strongly considered by advanced players. There are a few compensating tubas on the market, but in general, the five and six valve tubas are preferred by the majority of professional tubists. Another option that exists is top action or front action tubas. I encourage you to revisit my tutorial on posture to see the differences. The placement of the valves in the front of the tuba are a strong preference of mine, although many beginner horns have top action valves. Front action tubas allow for easy access to the tuning slides while playing, and I feel that they are just more comfortable. I often get questioned about preference of plating. Tubas can be silver plated or polished brass with lacquered finish. You will occasionally see older instruments that have had lacquer stripped, leaving just raw brass. Some people are quite sensitive to brass and can have an allergic reaction when exposed, so I would encourage you to avoid unlacquered or non-plated instruments. I see no significant performance difference to lacquered instruments opposed to silver plated. Silver plating is more expensive but does not lead to specific performance advantage. I chose silver plated instruments mostly for cosmetic reasons, but I have seen more problems with failing lacquer than plating issues. Another significant option for tuba players is mouthpiece choice. A detailed discussion of mouthpieces would take even longer than a discussion of tubas. There are more options available on the market than imaginable, and the choice is overwhelming even for professionals. I do recommend smaller mouthpieces for beginners, although I feel that many teachers go a bit too small. I recommend the Bach 18 or similar for the youngest students. Many tubas will come with the smaller Bach 24 or similar. These smaller mouthpieces do encourage ease of production, but can encourage poor sound concepts and reduced usage of air. As students progress, I recommend switching to an even more open mouthpiece like the Con Hellebird. 
This mouthpiece is a great all-around mouthpiece and will serve a student well throughout high school and college. School programs typically purchase tubas, unlike other instruments that are purchased by individual students. The best schools will provide an instrument for home practice and a tuba for school use, since transporting the tuba can be difficult or impossible in many situations. Tubas are often shared by multiple students and great care should be made when planning a purchase for school programs. If I haven't been clear about my recommendations through my descriptions, let me be clear now. Music educators should buy contrabass B-flat tubas for their programs, three-quarter sized for beginners and four-quarter sized for high school players. Tubas should be from reputable manufacturers that are concerned about durability and playability rather than cost alone. A good private lesson teacher can guide advanced players through the process of purchasing tubas, and I strongly encourage students to consult the teachers at the colleges they are considering for specific recommendations. Most college professors have strong opinions about equipment and value having input as students buy instruments. I certainly have my opinions not only on size and key, but on make and model. I am always happy to share those opinions with prospective students as well as help them navigate the options of dealers, online markets, and financing options that are almost always overwhelming to students and their parents. Tubas are expensive, but if you purchase a high quality horn and properly maintain it, you will find that it holds its value well and can serve musicians for many years. Thanks for watching. <laughs>